talk about some change data capture. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll do a little bit of CDC. I'll show you guys also a little bit of change data capture inside of SSIS. I'm not going to go real deep into the SSIS side. I'll show you mainly how to uh, consume the regular CDC inside of SSIS using the wrapper functions and those kind of things that we're going to create today. I also do have another webinar that I did uh, about a month or two ago that was purely looking at how to use change data capture inside of SSIS. So if you're on SQL Server 2012, be sure to check that one out if you're curious about how to use the native components for change data capture now that those are available to you. So that's on SQL Server 2012 as well as SQL Server 2014. Okay. All right. Real quick, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a consultant and trainer for Pragmatic Works over in Jacksonville, Florida, down in Mosquito Country. Um, I speak at user groups and all kinds of stuff like that. If you guys are happen to be in the Orlando area today, I'll actually be doing the, the uh, Northern Orlando, the OPAS user group uh, tonight. So I'll be heading down there to, to speak with them. And I uh, blog and write random stuff that hopefully people will read and more often than not probably don't. So let's talk about change data capture. So CDC was, was actually introduced in the 2008 version of SQL Server. So prior to that, you know, people still had this need to do change detection. Um, the, most common, the most common situation where you'll see this and, and kind of what we'll talk about the context of today is really in loading a data warehouse. So that's, that's really where CDC kind of uh, what, it, what CDC was really creative for is tracking those changes on your source system and bringing them into your, your data warehouse. So inside the world of data warehousing, we have a couple of different types of dimensions. We've got type zero, or attributes really. Type zero is an attribute that does not change. Type one is an attribute that changes, but we don't care to keep the history on it. So that might be something like your phone number if uh, we don't care about the history on your phone number. Um, and then type two, those are those attributes inside of our dimensions that change, and we also care to keep the history of those. So over before 2008, you know, it was a little bit harder to keep track of those things and determine which type of change it was that we were bringing into our warehouse. And there's a task inside of, uh, or excuse me, a data flow component inside of SSIS called the slowly changing dimension wizard. And that was what a lot of people used to use in order to load their data warehouses. There were a few ways that people detected these changes in addition to that. So audit timestamps are a, one way to do that. But as any DBA out there will probably tell you, audit timestamps aren't necessarily the most reliable thing. They're, they can be, there's workarounds for it. If maybe those are controlled by triggers or something like that, but the triggers can always get disabled. And there's a lot of things that could go wrong with an audit timestamp. And therefore, a lot of companies don't necessarily trust those audit timestamps. So I've had numerous clients who will go in and they're, they're fairly confident about it, but they just don't want to use that to load their warehouse. They don't want to use that to detect which records have changed since the last time we loaded because they're not 100% sure uh, that it is going to be accurate. Another way that we could detect changes that we used to use is through the use of triggers. So every time I run an update statement, I write the previous version or I write the new version of the record out to a separate audit table. And then I bring in all those records from the audit table into my warehouse. So that way, every time a change is made, I've already got a copy of the record inside this change table. And that's kind of what CDC does, as you'll see, but it kind of automates that and does it a little bit more efficiently for us. So triggers were one way to do that. Make an update, make an insert, do a delete, automatically writes it to a table, and we know we need to make those changes in our downstream systems. Uh, another way to do that was a custom store procedure. So similar to um, writing a, doing a trigger on your, on your database or on your table there, it says whenever I run, run a certain DML operation that it writes out to a table. We can build custom store procedures that go in and, and they say things like, well, rather than running just an update statement against the table, I have to execute this particular store procedure. And then the store procedure would essentially do a lot of the same things. You know, it would write it out to a table or maybe it would automatically um, make the change on the, on the data warehouse system, something along those lines. Could be a whole number of things inside those store procedures that were done. And then finally, there's, a, there's some third-party tools out there that you could possibly use to do change detection as well. A Tunity CDC is one that always, um, always comes up in conversations with our, with our customers. So 
Lots of different ways that we could do change detection, none of them necessarily ideal. That's not to say that CDC doesn't have its limitations, as we'll talk a little bit about towards the end, but it's a much better solution than a lot of these other options that we have here. Okay, so what is change data capture? As I mentioned earlier, it was designed for data warehouse loads, and what it ultimately does is it reads the logs and it captures and stores all of your inserts, updates, and your deletes. So any DML operations that you're doing on your database are going to be captured. It does this through a couple of through a couple of different mechanisms, which we'll I'll show you some of those here in just a moment. But essentially what that does, what CDC does, is it reads the, the SQL Server transaction log and it's going to take any time that it sees those DML operations and it's going to write those those records out to what's called a change table. So it's going to be the same table name underscore CT for change track. Okay? So it keeps all of your history, that's one of the really nice things about it, is it actually keeps every single change that you make to your records. It will purge the records out of those change tables after a certain period of time. I'll show you guys that as well. But it does keep all of the history. The nice thing about that is we can actually feed into some of these functions that we'll look at. We can feed a particular time and see exactly what that record looked like at a point in time. So. Ultimately, that's what we're going to use our warehouse for, but we do have the ability to do that if we need to go back and do some audits or anything like that. So we can go see what any of our change, uh, any of our records that were changed, what they looked at, uh, what they looked like, rather, at a certain point in time. Okay. Nice thing about these is um, it's it's going to be stored inside of a table. So it's a very easy format for you to be able to, to go out there and uh, just query the, query the data and pull it back. So it doesn't store this out into a separate data file. It doesn't store it out into a, to a separate log file, rather, that you have to have some kind of a special reader to go take a look at um, or anything like that. So uh, it does store that in a table format. It's really easy to consume. Another nice thing about CDC is you can actually capture it on individual tables. So we have to enable this on the database level, but we also just go in and uh, tell it which tables we want to track the changes on. So if we have a source system maybe that has uh, you know, a couple hundred tables in it, but we only need maybe a dozen of those for a particular project that we're doing, we can go turn on uh, CDC on those individual tables so that we don't have to uh, sift through as much data whenever we're trying to, to do our um, to do our ETL here. And then finally, uh, using that log reader, we're